We're going to pull from the book of Genesis today on the story of Cain and Abel. So go ahead and turn with me to Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. I'm reading from the NIV. Here we go. Adam lay with his wife Eve, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, With the help of the Lord I have brought forth a man. Later she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain his offering. And in his offering he did not look with favor, so Cain was very angry in his face was downcast. Very interesting. So the question here that people have asked for years is why was Abel's offering accepted and why was Cain's offering not accepted? We see no instruction at this point yet in Scripture as to how offerings are to be given or any regulations on offerings, but apparently there must have been some instruction given to Adam and his family that we do not know about at this point in Scripture. Later on, we do see information regarding offerings and sacrifices and in the book of Leviticus, for example. But at this point, we do not see any. All we see is people performing sacrifices and offerings at this point. So likely some instruction had been given, although it's not in Scripture. And we see that Abel apparently followed good instruction. But Cain, at least on the surface, does not seem to have. Many people believe that Abel, that his offering was accepted because he sacrificed living animals. He sacrificed animals and blood was shed. And we know that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission for sin, as the scripture says. In Cain, his offering was from what grew out of the ground. So many people believe that that is why Cain's offering was not accepted, and yet Abel's was. Abel sacrificed an animal for his offering, and Cain, for his offering, gave what came out of the ground. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look a little bit closer before we jump to that conclusion. If you look, it says that Abel worked with the animals. He was taking care of animals. In fact, it says Abel kept flocks. So it makes sense that Abel would give an offering from the flocks because that was his section. That was what he specialized in. That's where he was placed, was the flocks. Now, Cain worked with the soil. So naturally, he gave an offering that came from the soil. What doesn't make sense when you go with the theory that Abel was accepted because he offered a blood sacrifice and Cain offered what came from the soil is that if Cain wanted to make a sacrifice then with the blood offering he would have literally had to have taken one of the animals from Abel's flocks and would that really be a sacrifice given from Cain or would that really be two sacrifices from Abel so if we look at it a little bit closer we'll see it makes perfect sense that Abel offered from what he took care of, that was the flocks. And it makes perfect sense that Cain offered from what he took care of, which was the soil. Yet still, Cain's was not accepted. What's interesting is that even in the book of Leviticus, we see that grain offerings or offerings from the soil is accepted to God, not just offerings that come from blood. Now, we do see, if we look in in Leviticus uh, chapter 6 and also, let's see, yes, chapter 6, verse 14, it talks about grain offerings and the regulations for grain offerings. And we also see, starting on verse 24, sin offerings and how that works. Sin offerings are given from blood of animals, but grain offerings obviously from what comes from the ground. Now, typically, grain offerings are for worship purposes but the animal sacrifice is just for the remission of sin when it comes to the sin offering. And I'll go ahead and read here from chapter 6, 
Let's see. I'll go ahead and start with verse 19. It says, The Lord also said to Moses, This is the offering Aaron and his sons are to bring to the Lord on the day he is atoned. Uh, he's anointed. A tenth of an ephah, a, a fine flour, as a regular grain offering, half of it in the morning and half in the evening. So we see grain offerings are in Scripture. Therefore, it's very possible a grain offering would still be accepted in the book of Genesis. So why? Why is Cain's not accepted? Why is Abel's accepted? Let's go into a little bit of depth here. It says, Abel, it says in verse 4 of chapter 4 of Genesis, but Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. Apparently, Abel knew he were to bring offerings from the firstborn of the flock. Some people call it first fruits, firstborn. Give God the first of what you have. And Abel did this from the first of his flock. And he looked on favor toward Abel. But let's take a look at Cain's offering now. It says here, in the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering. It says he brought some of the fruits. It doesn't say first fruits. It doesn't even say the best fruits. It just says some of the fruits. So, of course, this is open to some interpretation, but at least what I would offer out there as interpretation of the scripture is that it wasn't grain offering or blood offerings. That was the difference here in this story as to why God accepted Abel's offering over Cain's. The difference is really what came from the heart. Abel offered the first of the flocks. The firstborn of the flocks. Cain offered just some of what came up from the ground. I venture to say that Cain likely didn't give God the first fruits, and it was likely not even the best fruits. He probably picked some of the fruits that looked okay, or maybe even the worst fruits, for all we know, and gave those. And God wants the heart. Abel, his heart was in his offering to, toward God. But Cain's apparently does not appear that it was. God always wants the heart. In fact, man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks upon the heart as we see in Scripture. And I believe even today with our offerings, God looks on the heart. Yes, I believe you should tithe and you should give offerings. That's great. All that's good stuff. But when we do it, we have to do it from the heart. Give from the heart and God will accept your offering from the heart. If you don't give from the heart, your heart's not in it then that's not going to be pleasing to God. And also when you give, make sure you're giving your very best. Give the first of what you have to God, the first fruits. Give your best to God, not just a mediocre offering. That I believe is a lesson that we can learn from the story of Cain and Abel on their offerings.